So we're just going to get straight into the uh, film. Uh, we're at the side of Manchester's Crown Cart. The Manchester Rochdale Canal runs along the side of the Crown Cart. Uh, we're going to see a much older wall as we drop down. Uh, from the road that we are stood on today. It's here, Minshall, Minshall Street. And walking down, we'll walk down towards the canal. We see the first bridge. So it's part of the ground car. Also, we are walking up the canal because the towpath actually starts here. Manchester UK, brief videos of time. I've come to check out the end of the Rochdale Canal, where the Aston Canal links. It ends for a short section before it starts again uh, after Canal Street. Um, might as well mention that that is uh, Manchester's gay community. Not locally as the village. But Canal Street has no towpath. So as I walk along there's an interesting section I've not filmed yet. <clears throat> now the Rochdale Canal actually goes under Piccadilly. Piccadilly Plaza, which is a hotel next to the train station. I'll show you these bridges underneath. Which we can't see because it's too dark. show you we're on the old canal so we can't really walk along the canal uh, I think we missed one lock gate so we're just gonna walk straight underneath but we filmed it from the lower level as part of Deansgate um, Wharf which is now Deansgate is a different kind of area it's more nightclubs bars and restaurants but anyway regardless as we walk up we've gone past the carts will disappear under Aiton Street Bridge into the Piccadilly area um, it's through Piccadilly Locks, Piccadilly Wharf and Piccadilly Basin that's how it was 200 years ago. It's been changed quite radically because of the train station. You have certain areas along the canal that's where a lot of things tend to happen. You just all sort of meet in them areas. Just the way things are, it's physics. A river may cross under, the road goes over, the train station comes, the canal was still being used and everything seems to accumulate together. Oh, obviously I have to shout a little bit. There's a bit here where water is seeping out from the wall on the right hand side. The pressure of the water in the lock is forcing the water under the path and out up through the brick on the other wall. So the weight there causes a lot of pressure at the bottom, which is forcing water to leak on this side. So here we are. Quite loud the water obviously. I'm just trying to get a glimpse of all the building was here. It's used to run through fields. To me this is like surreal. That's why I've saved it. Ashton Canal has an area further up that I haven't no, I haven't filmed yet, but there's three bridges together and the motorway bridge. Uh, there'll be final sections. Don't know how I'll squeeze them in. Possibly when I do Peak District, Peak Forest Canal. I did want to add it to this, but I don't want to go on too much. And this Piccadilly Wharf area is what we're concentrating on. And I did walk down again from the top of the Ashton. So 
I just felt it was too much information in too short a time. So maybe I'll do one that is just all culverts as an extra bit. As I said, we can add to these with time. This video is, you know, as it is. I don't want to add to it and just add to more confusion. It's got sort of an exit to all the Ashton Canal that I've done so far. If that makes sense, I hope it does. So, obviously, the bridge above me was also here. That's older than the building above us. You have to cross the gate here, and you'll see it's quite cool. So it's Piccadilly Lock. Anyway, we walk under there. It's owned by two hoteliers, and I'm not going to advertise their names. They're very popular hoteliers. I did say it was called something else Piccadilly Plaza. To be called Piccadilly Plaza, it's around this area. There's a hotel, and the big structures, and the part of the train station and roads are above us. That's where the bridge intertwines and all the rest of it. You can't see it above as clear as you used to because it's just been added to and added to over time. The open area, uh, there was Piccadilly Wharf, part of the basin. Um, or a reservoir it stores water for the lock systems so it doesn't just run out of water the minute you empty a lock you larger areas like ponds or basins like a bowl are built to store a little bit more water that they can keep stored there for the locks uh, there's a floating platform bridge that we walked along um, can most probably be moved left and right to access either sides of the wall. That's probably why it is a floating bridge and not a more, you know, stable structure. If you look, it, yeah, I think that's exactly what it would be, basically, if you look. It makes more room as well, in case your barge is slightly too big and you're stuck underneath that big structure. Um, it's extremely noisy as well, uh, even with filters on the microphones, but that's because, in effect, you're underground, it's like being in a cave with two waterfalls, in effect, um, Doppler effects and echoes and all the rest of it too, amplifies the already, you know, bellowing sounds. Uh, so we've crossed over the Rochdale Canal now, we're passing under the Great Juicy Street Bridge. So, and then we'll be joining the Ashton Canal through Jutland Road Bridge, which was formerly Junction Street Road Bridge. That connects, funnily enough, to Store Street. The aqueduct crosses Store Street, part of the Ashton Canal. So either way, Store Street passes under uh, the nearby aqueducts. So we're in an area called Ancoats. If the Rochdale Canal is followed under Tariff Street, you also meet Great Ancoats Street. The area next to the modern Keeper's Key. But this area was actually built up with mills and only one canal link from the Ashton and it's the Islington Canal we have jumped up also to Fairfield during this video 
timing should be quite good here. Fairfield. Uh, you'll see it was once totally straight the line from the top lock the top lock before we dropped down into Manchester or the straight line towards the Huddersfield narrow canal um, but here there was also a straight line uh, through Gilesden we're in Gilesden at the top and Hollingwood branch canal went all the way along to Hollingwood um, it's a place Daisy Nook which still exists but was an old village once uh, that's along the old canal the Medlock flows through a village called Little Moss or did uh, that's from Oldham it actually goes under Oldham mostly now so you won't see it uh, it's near to the Tame funnily enough the Tame River Medlock and Tame actually quite goes together at the source uh, they both flow down now I'm going to cut between the bottom and the top of this canal but if we're walking down and travelling around the Islington Wharf that's at the very bottom of Ashton Canal it's situated near its last lock um, I think you have to drop through that last lock to link through to the Islington Canal sections but now there's a modern wharf and it looks like they used to link but they never did so it's just there for pleasure cruising it's a nice area you'll see we're going to be walking around that also the big building we see in the arch bridge at the, that's still on the Rochdale Canal you see where it splits apart that would have originally been into the Islington wharf and dock areas so it's a canal that goes in and out of the mills so it's quite long but doesn't go very far if that makes sense but that's the Islington is more of a service canal for all the mills and wharfs and everything in the area but the big building that is absolutely brilliant I think it's 1907 and it's the Royal Mail original main sourcing office I could look at that building all day it really is. Some of the buildings are amazing when you stop and take a good look at them. And you look at the modern builds now with the cranes and the high-tech engineering and computers and they still make mistakes. There's a, one being stripped down actually where the foundations are wrong in part of the new builds. But this was all built basically by hand. Scaffolding, yeah. Steam cranes assisted on site. But it, it's skills people's skills and actual and if you look it's perfection it's absolutely perfect every single brick is the same size the same cut on the same windows you just have to take a very good look at them to appreciate how skilled these structures are and they're still there you know what i mean they've lasted 110 years and they look brand new yeah so you know, I got a bit nostalgic there, I know, but I do actually love them. I do, I love our history. Anything like that throughout the world, really. You know, from the pyramids to the Industrial Revolution, I'm fascinated by anything that you know, stands out as a brilliant piece of engineering. Our structure, the canals, buildings, roads, whatever it is, you know, I'm fascinated. Anyway, but like I say, we're cutting between and I'm losing concentration but uh, I'll write on the screen any other little facts from now on uh, we come across it'll just say I believe this was or I think that was and I'm going to explain now some of the actual facts of the canals when they were constructed who constructed them we've heard about Star Street aqueducts uh, facts like well, the Rochdale is the most interesting, I think. <clears throat> Literally between every lock was a story to tell. Um, walking down it, I didn't realise how interesting it actually was. And it goes through different environments, different places. It ends up in the city, it starts off in the countryside. Right over the Pennine Moors. There's Romans at the end of this canal. There's Romans at the start of this canal. You know, back in time. Um, Stockport, Ranch will also be shown 
doesn't exist anymore, but you can get a good look at what it would have looked like. It's quite a pretty one actually, it's not just an addition. Um, so like I say, the Rochdale is so interesting. I didn't realise how cool it was until I started to walk it. I pretty much have walked it all now. I've walked it all about three times now. <laughs> I've realised that I really do love it. It's the size of it, the way it's built. It's stories that you find out about the mills and how much money they were making and how it, it's just fascinating the Rochdale Canal personally I think it is a really important part of history and uh, people have complained it's not very pretty I do agree with that I don't own a barge so I don't really care <laughs> I only care about history <laughs> sorry oh, they, but they do say honesty is the best policy that just came out it's not that I don't care about people, it's just I like the structure because of its history and what it's done to Manchester, how it's built Manchester up from the canal. Well, some people t tell you it takes them an hour and a half to fill the water tank on the barge. Why I would want to even know that, I don't know, personally. But people who are part of the boating community, it's very interesting. And I'm learning a lot about maritime history, as it were. Inland waterways are a very important part of British history. All the rivers are basically connected to the inland structures by canals. So the idea is connecting the sea to the centre of the country. So that's what they're all there for. They're all, you know, they're a business. They're the first railways before the roads and now the plaza cruises and that's what I'm saying. The, the infrastructure, like people can't fill the tanks up very quickly because the tap was put there like 200 years ago and they've done the best to upgrade it and it's done on, you know, it's charitable funds so it doesn't have to be the greatest. I'm just saying, the history is still important. I'm sorry if it takes you three hours to fill up your bath.